Following the arrest in Vancouver of Huawei CFO Meng Wenzhou for alleged violation of U.S. sanctions against Iran, many Canadians are for the first time starting to ask questions about Huawei, its business practices, its relationship with the People's Republic of China, and, above all, about whether Huawei should be seen as a trustworthy partner in the development of Canada's communications infrastructure. These questions are extremely timely. As was made clear in a recent op-ed in Canada's Globe and Mail newspaper by myself and Richard Fadden, former National Security Advisor to Canada's Prime Minister. Canada's Western allies are waking up to the threat posed by Huawei. Just recently, New Zealand joined Australia and the United States in banning the company from participating in the next generation mobile data networks. One of New Zealand's largest telecommunications networks had proposed using Huawei's equipment in its 5G networks, but the government rejected it on the grounds that it posed, quote, significant national security risks. This decision has now placed Canada in the uncomfortable position of being a minority among its partners in the Five Eyes intelligence sharing community. While the United Kingdom has not formally banned Huawei, Britain's main telecom company, BT Group, has announced they will not use Huawei's 5G equipment. Now Washington has begun a campaign to dissuade its allies from doing 5G business with Huawei on the same national security grounds. There are plenty of reasons why intelligence professionals are alarmed by Huawei's involvement in our 5G network. When we hear the name Huawei, the company wants us to picture slick smartphones and a normal telecommunications firm endowed with what its advertising calls, quote, a higher intelligence. Yet Huawei is not a normal telecom company. It was founded by a former officer of the People's Liberation Army. It's extremely close to the upper echelons of the People's Republic of China. Indeed, Huawei operates in what the People's Republic calls a strategic sector, a core of their domestic security interests. The company supplies the People's Liberation Army itself and is officially referred to by the government of China as a national champion in the telecom sector. China has a long history of conducting extensive cyber espionage operations against the West. Canada is not immune. There is evidence of the Chinese hacking Nortel before its demise in 2009, the National Security Council, and the potash industry. Ottawa has experienced breaches in energy, natural resources, and the environment, and China is widely thought to be the culprit. The close relationship between Huawei and a Chinese government with a history of cyber espionage should be worrisome. Add the fact that China's 2017 national intelligence law gives Beijing the power to compel Huawei's support for its intelligence work, and the red flags become just too numerous to ignore. Rather than the higher intelligence of Huawei's advertising, a better catchphrase for the company might be a covert intelligence, one that is neither innocent nor friendly to the West, and our closest allies are coming to this realization. For instance, the UK's Huawei Cybersecurity Evaluation Center admits the equipment it has tested may not even match what Huawei uses, and it concludes that it can no longer provide, and I quote, long-term technical assurance around Huawei. Yet Ottawa relies on exactly this kind of equipment testing to support its claim that Huawei poses no national security threat. Huawei already has extensive relationships with Canadian institutions of higher learning, including a promised $50 million to 13 universities to develop 5G technology. Not only would Canada be reliant then on Huawei software and hardware for its next generation of wireless communications technology, but Huawei might even end up owning the patents of 5G technology that arise from these research partnerships. Curiously, Ottawa refuses to allow Huawei to bid on federal communications contracts, 
a strange position for a government that seems relatively sanguine about the Chinese giant's presence in the development of a wireless network that will soon transmit all Canadians' most sensitive information. It's not too late for Canada to reject the firm's participation in 5G. Ottawa is currently conducting a security review designed to analyze cyber threats from companies just like Huawei. It's difficult to see how such a review could conclude that Huawei's participation in 5G doesn't pose a serious and unacceptable security risk. We have no reason to doubt the expertise and the good faith of Canada's cyber defenders, but, and it's a big but, they can't know what they don't know, and that fact alone involves considerable risk. Allowing Huawei access to our 5G network means we are giving our cyber adversaries the means to learn how to defeat our defenses. And once they have done so, it is too late. Denying Huawei participation in our 5G network is not a rejection of engagement with China. Rather, it is doing exactly what China is doing, unapologetically and energetically pursuing our national interests. Like many Western countries, we are often bedazzled by China's economic potential and therefore fail to ensure our national interests are not sacrificed in the pursuit of access to Chinese markets. These two objectives must go hand in glove. A fruitful relationship requires that we gain China's respect. The indispensable precondition of that respect is that we assert and protect our national interests and those of our allies with vigor and with clarity. I'm Brian Lee Crowley for the Macdonald Laurier Institute.